Welcome to another Sunday morning conversation. Today, my guest is Bridal Barber. She is an open water swimmer out in California. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, I can always hear you. Great. I can hear you. How are you? Good. You are Irish. No. <laughs> <laughs> Irish say no, I'm not. They, um, they tend to be dark haired and some with blue eyes. They say like the, when the Vikings went through, that must be where I, I got my background. I always thought I looked Irish too, until I went there. No, I meant by the name. <laughs> oh, by the name? No, it's Rigel. It's after the star in the constellation Orion. Okay. It's the Arabic spelling and it's the brightest star that we see like from earth. But Betelgeuse is brighter. I'm glad my parents didn't go with that name. Well, it's going to actually be supernova if you didn't know. Yes, I know. People tell me, they're like, that star is just burning bright and fast. And I'm like, well, hopefully that's not like me in my life. <laughs> we'll see. I want to see the supernova of it in my lifetime. They say in the next like 500 years or so, it could go anytime. Okay. With Rigel. Like that star? No, Betelgeuse. Oh, Betelgeuse. Yeah, there was something in the New York Times about it like a year ago, whether or not it was even still alive because it was doing some weird pulsing things and it takes forever for that light to reach Earth. So who knows? Mm. So tell me, how did you get into open water swimming? Oh my goodness. I grew up like you, it sounds like swimming. I think I saw on one of your previous interviews that you were a swimmer. And I stopped in middle school, but restarted in high school, but was always like pretty decent swimmer. And then I got, let's see, I swam through my pregnancy and then I just stopped for years and years and years. And then I started up one summer when my son was like 12 or 13. I was like, we need to do something active this summer. We're going to get a pool membership. It was my first summer with a vacation. So we went to this 50 yard pool like every day and I got back into it. And then I just started meeting people that were like, oh, there's a Portland bridge swim. It's 12 miles. You should try it. So I met the right people and I joined and started, started it up. And now I just like to kind of explore and see, see where I can swim. Do you do that alone? Do you have a kayak? Um, Yes. Originally, I did a lot of training alone. At first, my very first year, I met this friend, Cindy, who was an um, oncology nurse, and she helped me get into shape for that bridge swim. And then when I signed on to do the North Channel, nobody can swim that many miles with you. So I found a, the lake that was the closest to my house and I would do like a four mile loop between all the boat launches so I could have people in their cars just toss me out feeds. And I would do 18, 20 miles, just circling this lake with different friends coming to the boat launches. Never was afraid whatsoever of any issues. And then um, after I swam the North Channel and got sight, it was huge confidence, like decre it just decreased my confidence. And now I'm a little afraid to swim too far by myself. So I have a coworker who's my speech language pathology assistant, and she loves going out and paddle boarding with me. So she's kind of my, my safety net right now. Yeah, I see. Cause you do it. In, you're in Seattle, right? Yes. I was in Portland area up until last August. And then we just moved up to Silverdale near Seattle last August. So you're doing your, you're doing your training swims in the actual, like the sound or whatever that is. Yes. And that was a huge huge change because going from rivers in Portland, the Willamette and the Columbia and lakes, you don't have to worry about like sea lions and seals and, and fish. I don't like fish. And now like I see them out there and they, and I'm scared. So I've got tides and all these sea creatures to deal with. And when I was like swimming the channel and big swims in the ocean, you always have a boat with you. But now I'll be along the beach. Sometimes my son will watch walk the beach. And the first time I ran into seals, he was out on the shore and they all jumped in off this dock. And I saw them jump in and I immediately went back to shore and I just swam like a hundred yards back and forth, four feet off the shore. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I can't go out there. There's seals. So it's just this big, big are adjustment. Seals are seals vicious or something? 
I don't think so. But um, when I first got into open water swimming, I went to San Francisco and did a 24 hour relay. And there was a biting seal that they debriefed us on in the harbor to avoid. And there'd been a lot of um, publicity around it because it was biting swimmers out there. So I think my timing getting into the open water swimming field and going to San Francisco kind of skewed my perception of the seals. Okay. So do you do your training in a wetsuit? Nope. All in skins. I have, I'm dealing with that too. I'm like all chafed. I don't know if you can see it everywhere. Neck, back from the swimsuit straps. I'm trying to find a good anti-chafing ointment for salt water because I had it down for fresh water pretty well, but the salt just gets in there. And yesterday I did an 8.6 miler and I'm just covered. And that's the hardest part. Like I'm not sore at all to go out again today, but I'm like, can I handle the swimming suit? Yeah, that's, uh, so did you do that North Channel? Tell me about the North Channel swim. Uh, Cause I, I had to look it up and it's from Ireland to Scotland. Yes, it's from Northern Ireland to Scotland. They have a um, swim series called Ocean Seven. And I can't name all of the swims, but the English Channel is one, the North Channel is another one. Catalina, um, Catalina one. Island is one. The North Channel is like notoriously supposed to be the most difficult because of the temperatures and the jellyfish. And I think the currents might be stronger in there supposedly. So I had been going to Ireland a few summers with my aunt and decided that I thought I'd like to swim that swim. So I did a, what do they call it? A qualifying swim and got accepted and totally thought I could do it and got out there and probably, I don't know, six, seven hours in, I developed what they, what they think is swim induced pulmonary edema. So I just started like wheezing, couldn't breathe, couldn't take a full breath. And the boat crew knew immediately because I, I normally bilateral breathe and I instantly started breathing on one side and my stroke count dropped. And I ended up swimming that way for several hours. And then I started coughing and was coughing up a little bit of blood and they were like, yeah, we need to get out. <laughs> so I got, it. it was so disappointing because I made it like 18 miles. It's a 21 mile swim, but it can be longer because the currents will yeah. drag you this way and that way. And, but physically I was fine. I didn't feel hypothermic whatsoever. It was just that breathing. And I had no idea. I didn't know anything about it. I thought, well, you're trained for the cold water. You're physically, your muscles are ready for it. That was you no wetsuit. Swim forever. Either. Say it again. That was no wetsuit either. That was no wetsuit. They don't allow wetsuits for any like channel swims. So anybody that does the channel that has times or without wetsuits and it was like 51 52 degrees maybe cold. 50 at spots and then huge jellyfish like i could see them below me i got stung by a couple but they were like maybe six feet in diameter the heads of these jellyfish out there that's cold <laughs> it's cold it is it definitely takes some getting used, used to. I'm from like north of Seattle growing up. And so we would backpack. I went to summer camp out here. We swam in the sound in the, actually in the Strait of Juan de Fuca too. So I think I grew up just getting used to it and riding ferries because my grandmother lived a ferry ride away from us. So I would always be like, well, if the ferry goes down, I can make it to that point. So I feel like that's kind of where my love of this stemmed. It's like, where can I actually swim? Yeah, I've done some open water swims, not many. Uh, mine was in the Tennessee River for the longest one for four and a half miles. And I'm like, God damn, will this ever fucking end? <laughs> Were you with the current? Did you have an assist? Yeah. <laughs> I swam four and a half miles in an hour and 27 minutes. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think I was averaging close to like one minute, five seconds per hundred. Yeah, I love those swims. It's hard to get them though. <laughs> but they they have a swim the suck race out here at Tennessee. I North. did that. Um, That time I did the 24 hour relay, I won that swim. It like sells out apparently in minutes because it's so popular. Yeah. And um, 
they did a draw prize. I never win these things, but I happen. That was an excellent weekend, that San Francisco weekend. My friend and I, we were out wine tasting between my swims. And my other friend texted me. She goes, you won swim the suck or the, the cornhole. And I had no idea what either one was, but I'm like, I'll take swim the suck. And so I got free entry and got to go out there. It was so much fun. Chattanooga is a lovely town. I love that place. That's the only place over there I've been. I think we dipped into Georgia between on the drive with Nashville, between Nashville and Chattanooga, but it was yeah. beautiful. I think we missed the fall colors by a week or two. Uh, but it yeah. was really fun. Yeah, because it's like October 1st or somewhere around there. Yeah. So are you going to do it? Maybe one day. I don't know. I got invited to do the Mackinac Bridge Swim. Um, the Mighty Mac uh, next year, which is only 4.3 miles, but it's it's the bridge that goes in between uh, Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula of Lake Michigan. Oh, that would be cold. It, um, he's like, it can be like 67 degrees. It's like, or if the winds pick up from the east, it'll blow in the cold water and it'll be like 52. Yeah. Oh, are you going to wetsuit it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It makes I mean, you faster, don't. supposedly. I don't feel faster in a wetsuit. I know I'm faster in a wetsuit. <laughs> more buoyant. You sit up higher in the water. Yes. Supposedly in the salt water, too. Yeah. So are you going to try the North Channel again sometime? Yes, I'm revisiting. I feel like I'm revisiting the swims I didn't make. So the one I'm doing in August is around Bainbridge Island, which is the island right here where I live. And it's 25 miles. And I chose that swim as a training swim right before the North Channel the last time. And I could only do one day. It was like Memorial Day Sunday. And only one guy has done it. And he was my pilot, Andrew Malinick. He's the head of Northwest Open Water Swimmers Association out here. Excellent guy. Um, but the day I chose wasn't a favorable day for tides, but it just worked with my training plan. So it wasn't a huge deal if I made the 25 miles or not to me, but I would have been the first woman to have done it. And so um, making it 23 out of the 25 miles was a little bit of like a defeat for me. So I want to finish that one first. How I think long did I that take you? The longest I've been in the water was for that swim in the North Channel. It was like 12 and a half, 13 hours. And when I did Bainbridge, um, I ran out of hot water on the boat and my son was on the boat. I think he was 16 at the time. That was a big mistake. Never again. Cause he's like hungry. We were hoping I'd be done in 12 to 13 hours and I shouldn't have asked, but I go, how much longer till we're done? And they're like, Oh, two more hours. And I'm like, Nope, calling it and just got out. And so he's not coming on the boat again. It's not invited because I feel like I could have maybe finished it had I not had that pressure, <laughs> the time police. Oh, he's not going to die. No, but just, just annoy me. <laughs> that voice in my ear. I don't have any kids, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, you know, it is kind of nice because I can do whatever I want. I'm also not married either. I can do whatever I want. I don't have to answer to anyone. And it's like, oh, I, there's no checking. There's no asking for permission. It's like, oh, okay, I can just do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's 18 now and he's in college, but I told you, I think in one of our texts, he has autism. He's high, very high functioning, but it's like still needs, still needs me to help him with his routine and, and force his eating. He likes to run too, and, um, got into like over exercising during COVID and not being at school. And so now like all I can do is feed that kid. I hate going to Costco and just, it looks like I have like a family of five. I love going to Costco. It's my favorite place. <laughs> I think just because I have to do it. I don't, it's ruined Costco for me. Does he live at home? Yes. Yeah, he we moved here because he can go to college. We just chose places on the map that had ferries and I interviewed for jobs and he applied for school. And okay. this is where we ended up. Okay, so what, what school is he going to? Olympic College. He just okay. finished his first year. So I figure I got one more year, and then he's hoping to transfer to a four-year to run. So enjoy it while I can, I guess. 
Oh, okay. I, I mean, you, you had him for 18 years. It's like, all right, you can yes. go now. But I'm single, so he's like my best friend. I've got a built-in person to go to movies with, concerts with. Today, um, my paddler is out. She can't find childcare, so I don't have a paddler. And he's like, well, let's go to the lake. I can run around it and you can swim. And I'm like, I've got built-in motivation right there. Nice. I use my mom for those kind of things. I, uh, I'm taking her to Roth, Germany to do Challenge Roth next year. And uh, I took her, where did I take her this year? I took her to Vegas when I did a run. So, yeah. yeah. Let's hope he'll do that for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, it was nice because I paid for half the stuff there. I'm like, okay, well, I got the hotel, um, airfare. I'm like, okay, let's go to Vegas. So, it was the first yeah. time I ever went to. So, yeah, I've never been to Vegas. I need to. I want to swim Lake Tahoe someday, too. It's a lot bigger than I thought. I bet. Did you hang out by the pool? No, my pool's too small. Like, uh, it might, when I was with my ex, the pool was 25 yards. So I would go down there at four in the morning to go work out. And uh, like the lights of the pool didn't work for a while. And I bitched and bitched at the HOA to get it done. So in the meantime, I took one chair here, one chair there, and I duct taped two flashlights to it. So it would highlight just where I would do flip turns. And I'm like, I don't need to see the rest of the pool. Yep. <laughs> so I Sounds made it work. Perfect. But I don't have that luxury anymore. Mine's not 25 yards anymore. It's, uh, and I don't like swimming on a tether. Yeah, I'm like you. We have a tiny pool here. I'm going to teach my paddler's daughter this um, summer some swimming lessons, though. So that'll be I can't handle the chlorine too much. So how old are you now? I knew you would ask that. <laughs> I'm 41. Oh, so you had your kid young. Yes. Yep. I think that's the way to go, honestly. I've got friends having kids now and I can't imagine it. Like, at least I can go out and swim nine miles and leave him at home and he'll take care of the dog and the cat. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm 37, so, I, and I don't have any. If I am gonna have any, it's gonna suck. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can still do it. Well, I mean, I can, but it's gonna be like, I'm gonna be almost 60 by the time. Yeah. That's my thought now with my friends having kids. I'm like, eh, think about the graduation and when they're getting married, all those pictures. So what other swims do you have in mind? So this Bainbridge one this summer, there's one I would like to do and it's not very far. Like I think it's only three to five miles on the map and it's from my hometown Bellingham to Lemmy Island, which is the closest of the San Juan Islands out there, but it's notoriously strong currents. There's this passage between the mainland and the island called Hales Passage. And there's like rumors of a UFO landing in there and there's crab boats tipping over all the time. Like it's horrific story in terms of like stories in terms of drowning, but I kind of just wanna see if I can do it some point. But the hard part for these swims is you have to find a boat like an actual motorboat, because if I had Sipe again out there and needed to get pulled out, a kayak's not going to be able to keep me from being hypothermic and get me to shore quickly. So I want to do that, then go back to the North Channel. And if I can finish the North Channel, I'd probably start working on those other like Ocean 7 swims. I'm afraid of sharks, though, too. So like Catalina Island yeah, in the California. How do you, I'm completely understand how you're into the sport. Don't like salt water. Don't like sharks. It's like, I do like salt water. It's just, I'm figuring out like the chafing cream still. Okay. And up here we have orcas. We don't have sharks, but if I go do Catalina Island, then you're out dealing with sharks potentially. And then also the Molokai Channel is another one of the seven seas. And that one, I think people get pulled frequently because of sharks. Where's so you the, spend all that money and then you're pulled because there's tiger sharks circling below you. Tiger sharks aren't going to hurt anybody. Yeah, you might have a skewed perspective being over there from Georgia. <laughs> I don't know. The only thing is bull sharks. I mean, it's like if they bite me, they bite me. They don't try to eat me. Yeah, maybe. I'm hoping the no wetsuit helps out too. Like, I feel like they go for more seal-like looking things. Where's that one? Where's that swim at? The Molokai Channel. It's up in Hawaii. Okay. That'll be like, I think the warmest maybe of the swims. 
Yeah, I've swam out in Hawaii before. It's not that bad. Yeah, I've never been there either. I've got a lot of traveling to do and swimming to explore. But over here, like it's so rich with the San Juan Islands. Like there's so many places you can just swim and the currents just are so strong. You need that boat. But I would love to just swim island to island if I could, like I was up in Scandinavian countries. So I think their much, islands are closer together. How much are those swims cost? Oh my goodness. I feel like the North Channel was 3000 ish dollars. It's a lot of money. Well, yeah. I mean, my challenge Roth experience is going to cost me like, excluding the fact that I have a ton of sky miles and hotel points, it's still going to cost me like 10 grand. Yeah. That's so, that's the, the hard part of this. I work all year and then I have the summers off to do it, but it's, it's very expensive. Yes. The local ones aren't so bad, but you still have to pay gas is so expensive right now. Gas and the pilot and the sanctioning fees. Yeah, that's why I, I, all my races that I can defer, I've been deferring them, hoping next year that the gas will be down. Yeah. I think, what is it down there? It's like 497 or something when I filled up the other day. Well, uh, I drive a Miata at the moment, and uh, it runs on premium gas. Oh boy! <laughs> I think I saw that that was like five ninety nine around here. Yeah, it's, it sucks. Costco gas is cheap, but yeah, that's where thing. I go. That's my favorite part about Costco. Yeah, I my favorite part about Costco is the meat. So, um, but uh, I go, and the thing is, you have to go to Costco to get gas before nine forty five. Because once yeah. the store opens, it's packed. Yep. I'm with you. I've got to go before work or if I go after work, you can't even turn in there. Uh-uh. So I go early. And sometimes I'll get up super early with the intent of only getting gas, like, and then going back to bed. <laughs> Way to be proactive. Yeah. What can I say? I'm actually disabled, so I don't have to go to work anymore. I saw you had that TBI and you tried to go back to work. Try to go back to work four different times and I just kept getting fired. So, you know, it's uh it is what it is though. I mean, it's eh, I, I I'm finding my way around. I'm trying to use this as job doing these as job experience because I run my channel kind of like an actual business, you know. Yeah. So I think it's great. I enjoy your motivation and all that I can tell you're doing a lot of research with these other people you've been interviewing. Yeah, it takes a lot of digging. It does. And yeah, you pulled you out of the obscurity, you know? <laughs> I know. I was my mom was like, how did he find you? I'm like, we follow each other on Instagram. And believe it or not, I find people like that all the time. Like, you know, the Guinness Book of World Records holder for fastest mile with a stroller, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping I can be the first woman around Bainbridge Island, and who knows. What else after that? Yeah, I mean, you, you should come do that Mackinac uh, uh, bridge swim with me. I might. You'll have to send me the details. There's yeah. a, I'd like to do some swims over there. There's like, the, well, not where you are, but the Boston Lighthouse. I need to hit the East Coast and Michigan area. Yeah, I mean, I'm swimming. So I've done two, uh, two Ironman, an Ironman and a half Ironman. An Ironman in Lake Erie and a half Ironman in Lake Michigan. So it's, I know what the conditions are like, so it's not unfamiliar to me. It's like swimming in an ocean. I bet you can, the winds, when they pick up in the lakes are even worse, I think, than the ocean. Yeah. Um, like, so uh, when I swam in Lake Erie for that Ironman, the day before they were setting out the buoys and everything. And it capsized, the winds were so bad because the storm came through, it capsized the boat. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that swim, how long is it? Remind me. 4.3 miles. I might come out there for that. I need to choose some swims and oh, get back on that's it. That's nothing for you. No, <laughs> I can race it. Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Well, and I, then what's the Germany event? Tell me about that one. That is Challenge Roth. It is an Ironman, but it's not an Ironman brand one. It's probably the most iconic race outside of the world championships. And I got a slot into that. 
and um, like it's a kind of like a river swim, but not really. It's, I mean, and then it's it's in the you know Bavaria, so it's very beautiful. I bet. Yeah. What is your strongest leg? It's a swim. <laughs> See, that's my issue with triathlons. I'm like, I can't, I've done the Seattle to Portland bike ride years and years ago, and I run a half marathon, but swimming's just the one thing that feels good. And I'm like, I don't think I could put the three of them together. And I'm such a long distance athlete that would entitle, like at the minimum, I would say the half Ironman. And I don't think I could run a half marathon after biking and swimming. Then walk it. <laughs> Maybe trying to get my son on board to become a triathlete because I figure he's young enough. He's a runner. He can bike. He can swim. Like yeah. you should get into that. You know, there's a lot of colleges that have teams too. I'll keep working on him. Might, might help him decide where to go next. Yeah, definitely. Well, hey, Roger, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'll send you the details when I get them. All right. Sounds good. Take it All easy. right. Take care, Eric.